And yes, here we are at Espresso Sesh, episode 94. Check one, check, check one. T- check one, check two, check 94. <laughs> yes, welcome. Mofono in the house. DJ hey, Sandy hey, Reed, hey, a.k.a. Hey, let's Benji. get these headphones on. Yes, let's get these headphones on. Let's get it going. Good to see you, Antonio. Oh, thank you for coming. Good, to, Great yeah, to see thanks you. Thanks for having me, uh, man. A pleasure, a pleasure. All yeah, right. It's good to be here. Good. It's good, good to have you back here. Yeah. Uh, after... Um, Probably you gave me one of the first episodes that I did on this show. Awesome. It's been two years now. It's yeah. like probably you were episode five, and now it's episode 94. So, awesome. yes. Check 94. Check 94. Yes. <laughs> ah, you know. 94 till infinity. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good. Like the 90s was a good decade. No. Yeah. So even for like, I'm looking forward to stay like from 90 to 98, 99. Yeah. There you uh, go. Cool. All right. So today the occasion is um, uh, we're going to talk about the, your latest release. Yeah. Uh, Ernie Fresh, Ernie Fresh. The Egyptian Lover, yeah, Mofono. and yourself, yeah, yeah. Young Andy. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be all about it. I just play some tunes while you, like, just when I started, I started, I think I started the show with the title track. Oh, cool. But yeah, you know, who better person than you to like talk about the record and play some tunes out of it? Great. Yeah. So yeah, like a little recap. So this yeah. is like a collaboration album with the MC and Ernie Fresh and the yeah. two producers behind the Yumofono and the, the legendary Egyptian Lover. You got it. And uh, you guys been producing like at your studio, uh, the circuit in Lower 8? Uh, circuit- yeah, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a long story actually, but the, the cool part about it is we, I got invited by Ernie Fresh and Young On D because I had been working with them a bunch before. Um, they invited me to go to L.A. and record with Egyptian Lover. They wanted me to co-produce their EP. Um, a few songs, they actually, we, it was just a few songs at that point. And um, they said we're going to the original studio that Egypt recorded, um, Egypt, Egypt. So it was the, the original studio, and uh, I just, he was the first guy to ever make a record that was my first favorite record. So to me, that was life-changing. So yeah, I said, I said yes, we drove to L.A., and we are at Rusk Studios the next day with the Egyptian Lover. And uh, you had to, you had access to his gear, so you had to, yeah, everything. He yeah. brought the original vocoder that he recorded Egypt, Egypt on. I'll play the song just for reference. Yeah. I think most people know it, but you know, it's yeah, it's a classic. It's so a classic, I think yeah. I think once you hear it, if you don't remember, you'll it'll click in. Yeah. And uh, you know the the result, the sonic texture of this uh, EP is uh, <laughs> like kind of like dips a lot like uh, in the in the eighties electro funk uh, style like drum machines. Uh, yeah, you know yeah. the 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 like MCing over you know like kind of yeah. Like we tried we tried to we tried to hit the era. Um, <clears throat> it, it's kind of to me it's kind of. Um, even though it's old school, it's very, very old school. To me, it's sort of the timeless era of rap um, in the sense that right now I feel like we're hitting another version of that in the sense that today's rap is, is 808 driven, which to me was some of those original rap records recorded, you know, like a, a lot of the, the Def Jam recordings stuff, you know, the the old Run DMC, Beastie Boys, Public Enemy, a lot of those were... 808 driven which is the 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 drum machine yeah who, is, who doesn't speak uh, about yeah yeah and so i mean that was that's what's cool about this ep is when i got re- you know when when they requested that i help them on this piece i saw it as an opportunity to dip into that era which is the 808 era because egyptian lover is literally the 808 king he's the yeah. god of the 808 you know so you know you had to I mean like and so deep into the the that era like working with dead machines that are from that era like yeah the, the yeah original the original eight, eight, you know the vocoder you know the yeah. synths so the yeah Jupiter eight yeah these these are all old synths and um you know the the idea behind it for me that I went into the studio was it was very heavy handed and that's the only reason I went into the studio was because they wanted my, my help you know Ernie Fresh. And young Andy asked me, and and we had a good working relationship musically. We both work together. We understand each other, and they trusted me. And with that, we were able to approach Egypt. And I can't believe how much freedom he gave me and us and worked with us. I mean, I've worked with tons of people, and to have such a legend be so 
I mean, how can how can he be so much more kind than so many new kids that had just got started last year? And so to have that experience was just amazing. You know, it was humbling and and it was just amazing. You amazing, know, I can't, I can't like you, like you say, life changing. No, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, re really, to have him say, "Oh, you want to do that?" and then and then be like, "Oh, I'm feeling that." You know, these changes that are really dramatic. To have him be totally into it and. Um, you know, we brought the we brought all the pieces back to my studio and did some more work. We recorded two more songs, and you know, I'll put it I'll put another few songs on, and then we'll come back and I'll tell you more stories about the songs. Let's let's show yeah. let's show the the album right here, California Color EP. Yeah, and there's a whole Colors. story. California Colors is um, it's it's we named it after we named it after well, it's it was Ernie's idea. Uh, he's got so many cool ideas. He, I told him I wanted him to rap. You know, he's very heartfelt and very thoughtful, and um, that can be misconstrued. You know, as you know, sometimes it can be misconstrued. And I wanted him to bring what he knows in the rap world, which is, you know, aggression and confidence and anger and just, you know, angst and and hype. You know. To, from the old school since he's very um, well versed in that sort of era of stuff and um, so he was like oh you want me to rap about graffiti I was like I guess that's what I want you to do <laughs> <laughs> so he rapped about California Colors which was a um, a grouping of Krylon paint that was released it was like limited edition I mean I, mean, I guess if there was a limited edition back then oh, okay. but they were called California Colors it was Krylon with a K, California Colors with a K, so we changed it to C, and he raps basically all about those colors, and you'll hear it, you know, Oxnard Orange, UB Yellow, Ramona Red, you know, and that's that's the rap, that's the opening rap, and the, the cool thing is, I did this thing where I got him to rap aggressively and freestyle, we wrote down a bunch of words that, that we both liked, that kind of remind us of that era, and um, when he rapped this sort of freestyle version, I, I kind of liked that energy. So we decided to throw that at the beginning of the of the song. So yeah, like the, this is this is straight up the motherfucker B boys. No? Yeah, yeah, we, <laughs> we can <laughs> yeah we can curse. Get, we can curse. Get it? it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can. Yes, it's a, a little degree of freedom. And we can. Yeah. Okay. See, that's why I like being on this show, Antonio. You, yeah. you care about the music. You care about this piece. You listened yeah. to it. You know. You yeah. know. And you know. And we've known each other for a long time. You yeah, know, we know each other since I was. It's so. nice to be on this side of the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of on the other watching on you the and other, stuff. Yeah. You know, it's good. It's, it's, a, good. it's a nice sound. It's no, good to, to be to here. The, to the radio show a little, a little. So you see what's going on inside. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's, uh, let's play a song uh, out of that California Color EP. No? Like, yeah, let's do think? it. Yes. I forgot to do the, my, my classic let's you know, do special this. effect for MSK. Espresso Sesh, California Color EP, yeah. cbrecords.com. There you go. Yeah, actually, yeah, we're gonna, yeah, we have lo lots of things to talk to and uh, you know, lo lots of music to play. So let me let me see if your uh, your little synth is plugged in. Oh, let's see what's up. Let's with see this. what's up. You, you kind of signature sound, huh? Yeah, you know. Oh, there it comes. There you go. There you go. Yes. Yes. Did I bring this last time? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, last, time, last time was a long Let time you know. ago. I think it was February of 2016. Now awesome. it's November 17. Okay. So, okay. You know. It feels like so long ago. I know, man. <laughs> like in the meanwhile, so, so many things happen. Right? It's almost like you had 93 episodes since then. Yeah, like, <laughs> kind of 90 episodes since then. Something like that. You know, like, lot of water under these bridges. You know, like. Oh, yeah. Cool. All right. So let's uh, let's let's play a track out of the of the California Great. EP. Yeah. Right? Let, let me throw it on. Yeah. 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 You got Mr. Mofono himself on the turntable. Let's start off with California Colors. All right. Let's start off with California Colors. You got the tables up here. And, you know, feel free also to play whatever you... I see you brought a bag of records, so, you know, like... You know, it's uh, always a pleasure. This one is going out to go. all the straight-up motherfucking people. <laughs> Take a 
Cherries in my hot raspberry FDIC grape and I will take Any MC's whole crate This is a rest in peace Into the colors The crowd wall representation from like the 80s To the 90s And that's why you were still fine <laughs> California Colors. We are the ultimate team. Striving to score to the most. We are the most. We are the most.
It's never too late to see my rhymes in this prime Like the name on your plate with cold crush as ice Rise higher than the fire so hot Can't stop for the ladies my desire for is them I adore For them a report from every angle I can table With more in store cause on the mic I am controller Who's down the rock and roll to put my groove into a body And no one's trying to hold it with the style that's mine All the rap design perfectionately put And well inclined to just rock won't stop at the drop of a dime And in case you want to know where it goes said this rhyme I'm about to say The rhyme was there for then it went this way Took a test to become an MC And Orange Cliff became amazed at me So Larry put me inside He got to lack The stroke drove off and we never came back They cut the record down to the bone And now they got me rocking on the microphone And then we talking autograph And tears and laughs and champagne and caviar And bubble bath You see, uh, uh, that's the life uh, that I lead And you suck at MC It's you I be So take it that and move back Catch a heart Attack because there's nothing in the world that run no level like a cold chill at a party in the b-boy stand And rock on the mic and make the girls wanna dance Fly like a dove and cup them up above I'm rocking on the mic and you come and run love I got a big long cat and not like a Seville And written right on the side and read just to kill So if you see me cruising girl just to move a step aside Come, first serve bases, cooling out, girl, taking you to death places. 
one of a kind And for your people to like And for your sucker MC This just ain't right Because you're biting all your life You're cheating on your wife You're walking around town Like a hoolin' with a knife You're hanging on the ass And chilling with the crew And everybody knows What you've been through I'm oh, with a one, two, three Three to two, one My man Larry Lab, My name's DJ Run We do it in the place With the highs and the pain I'm rocking to the rhythm Want to watch it over The one and two is more phono.
up all my ladies in the place. What? The one and only Lady Miss Desiree. Ultimate, 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 ultimate
Do you think rap is heading? Rap is headed the same place rock and roll headed after it established itself as a, a force to be reckoned with. You hear rap in commercials, you hear rap in other artists' songs, R&B songs, you hear rap in metal songs, you hear rap in, um, in movies and soundtracks and everything as long as the people that control the money can make a dollar off a rap it'll keep growing Monkey wrenches in my game, I'm not having it I got the family jewels And now you fools wanna play with tools My tool is a mic that I drift in my right hand
triple lines have to find style around one time for your mind to shine. Rewind, take it back, seven nine. That beat is up there. Up rock, downtown, freestyle, empire, skate around, fly girl, hard rock, can't go three creep, Chinese, my back, Murray's on my three six piece, but stop that. Patty do rock, free British with a diamond two zone. Level drills that used to rock that shark skin, three quarter living in crown heights downtown. Putting hell out of order, rope child, go to lock for the females. Jams in the Rasmus Hall, you don't stop way. Sarah J play ball at the high Mini trails on the block Pull a sock over your puma Roll to the jam and cruise You keep digging it Back then money making it was ill A lot of broke young bloods Had to boost the skill Under the wing Used to the adult Brooklyn drill Billy Moe's high post And skills never test that Press that yo I kept that high to the jailhouse Knock the ground Come around Crash crew tapes Go crunch Furious five Spoony G Moe D Treacherous epitome of hip hop And four busters And the Zulus And the guards in the earth but what it's worth is original hip hop. 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 Girl, take your business, man. You're talking like bombing, you know what I'm saying? Going to stores, racking. Go to Bergamot and racking. Go to Big Shot Queens, racking. The Jersey's on racking. Philly racking, you see? Long Island, chicken flavors. Hey, and yes, we are, we are back at BFF.FM. Uh, we've been uh, traveling all over the place, all over the eras. I mean, not all over the eras, but mostly like uh, steady on the, on the electrofunk. Yeah, uh, old, old school shit. Um, old, I, I ended with uh, Divine Styler to make a point of that. Is He's... He's been rapping forever, but it's that old school vibe, that old school energy is to me the most important thing. Like, I, if you know, there's some music out there now with that hype energy that I love, but this is just to me is straight to the source. So, you know, and you know, like you've been playing something that is uh, kind of, I mean, to me, like was never, never had before. No, so cool. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's. Uh, so you know, like you, you do also. I mean, besides the technical, uh, like I impeccable, like you know, like you, you are ah, very, you are very good, like with, uh, like putting together, like, like I mean, as a DJ, like technically amazing stuff, but also you know, like as a, like, uh, you know, like your your collection, you 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 pick like all this, yeah, <laughs> and also you know the cream. I I chose the cream. Some of it is, you know, some sorry, some of it is. Um, you know from just being around and some of it is people telling me about it some of it is just knowing it but you know like every every good dj you go to go into the shops or go to the go to the place to find good music you know to me this is a lot of the stuff that inspired me about old school rap is the energy you know to me a lot of that stuff that i played kind of tip touches on the drum machine with the raps and the energy and this sort of excitement of, of uh, making rap music which is, is uh you know i i feel like everybody's trying to play it cool you know now and I, i'm like man there's so much energy you know why not bring that energy to the to the place you know so this is kind of to me a lot of the stuff that really inspired me you know? it was influential to make the california colors ep and oh yeah also in, general, in general inspiring for your like your own life no yeah. yeah i mean if i if any of the dudes that made all that music liked the california colors ep i'd be stoked you know okay. and new people too it's not it's not like i don't want young kids to like my stuff i really do and um the, the california colors song is kind of when you hear it 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 definitely doesn't just sound old school you know um it's got some synths arpeggiating which to me is very new school you know that's that's my version of new school old school yeah, also it's good to uh, to the younger generation, let's say, let's put it like that, no? to let yeah. let them know that you know there was some music before, probably they were born. They actually sounded like sound like the music they're listening today, and people are trying to to sell the music that is original, but it's like taking like dipping into the you know like sampling a lot and something come the same of something that was like released in the eighties, and it's it's a great like. Uh, um, I was reading on your um, DJ Sandipi hmm. uh, bio oh, cool. on the website, no, and said that a record collector is an ar archivist uh, mostly, cool. no, yeah. and uh, you know you can uh, sh be a DJ and share like your finding with an audience, or just you can be like a fusionado, no, mm. or just a music lover. Uh, just you keep that 
But you know, it's good like as a DJ to share that sound that actually influences the sound of nowadays. Nowadays, and you can feel like you can see all the elements that are there. No, in today's music, that is coming from somewhere. No, mm -hmm. so you know, even like if you talk about old school, I see that, but it's not that old school because people now, producers now, are trying to sound like that. No, mm, so yeah, a lot. So yeah. it's more like. Calling Who's in. calling? Yeah, yeah it's, ah. uh, it's okay. It's not gonna go in the air, but you know, like I was keeping the ringer. Oh, on, okay. Because, yeah, it's all good. On the radio dial. On the radio, Call yes. <laughs> yeah, first caller. First caller on the radio dial. BFF. You say, stop talking about the old school. Stop talking yeah. about that old stuff. No, no. it's not. It's not. It's never I'm old. Just kidding. Like music has uh, no aspiration date, and uh, sometimes uh, things that are not sounding good in that moment. Yeah. And later on, they sound amazing, no? Yeah, I, li I like what you touched on. It, it, you know, there's, the DJ has always played a major role culturally in um, not just bringing music together, musical qualities together, but bringing people together. And um, I've always viewed DJ, the DJ role as more of a community player than, you know, a lot above many things because, you know, without people, what it, what is a DJ? You know, yeah. without people, you know, you have people to you know, to move into effect and be affected by the people. So it's a, it's a two-way street, and, you know, there's a beauty to when you can actually harness the knowledge and, and you know, the just uh, values and bring them to the stage and share that with people. And I think to be bold and affect people is really hard, just like in any... In any um, in any <laughs> in any um sorry uh in any work that anyone does in any profession is is hard to be noble bold and stand for your ideals you know and and stand up for what you believe so i always believe that if i'm playing just the newest stuff i'm not no one's benefiting from that you know so i always try and play the balance of old to new you know and it, and it's a balancing act i really feel like we're just like anyone, you know, if you're just if you're in a role where you can share knowledge with people, why would you share such superficial knowledge when any DJ knows that it is it didn't just start yesterday? So, mm. you know, at the the very first DJs were always playing older music. You know, that's that's part of it. So, I take that very serious, but I don't let it weigh me down. I don't let it weigh me down, and I don't let it affect me or everyone around me because. I think it is for what it is, and I don't see it as as I see it as a value and an in, and an intel intelligence and intellect and a form of communicating with people above all. And if you let it stand between you and people and change and and the new, you know, whatever the future is, if you let it stand in that way, you're not actually benefiting people. So I don't, you know, for example, when people say, "Oh, you played an all vinyl set," I try. I try not to weigh into that much because the reason I play all vinyl is not because it's all vinyl. It's just I'm a DJ. I love vinyl. You you know that you play tons of vinyl. So, you know, when when we play vinyl, it's it's not just because it's this heavy black plastic that weighs a ton. Because you you need some workout. No, you, as, as <laughs> yeah. the, the DJ workout is like the, the vinyl DJ workout. Uh, bring, bring and this the, is a bring workout too, bending over these little turntables. Yes. <laughs> I got the sweaty back, sweaty neck yeah. <laughs> coming at you. <laughs> Sorry. You no, know, it's true. It's true. It's it's good. It's a good value because you know if you can if you can play old and not just new, I think you're you're making the the experience uh, adding depth to the experience. You know so. That's why. I but know. also, you know, like um, talking about like your s selection. I mean, you you know how to beat match. You know how to play DJ. You know, mm -hmm. so you are not going. I mean, I seen you playing like like uh, mind blowing sets. You know? There are never like um, you never play just for the crowd to give them a, like an hard time, like a good time just to dance and, and a hard time. I give them you, a hard you, time. Yeah, more you than give them a hard time <laughs> because you know you give you give like a listening experience. You are like your your sets are like more narrative. No, so there is mm, a, yeah. there is a component of like discovery as a component of like. Uh, to be like out of the comfort zone. You are not playing like a regular like, DJ set. I mean, mm -hmm. you are like today. You were doing like a uh, electro funk, uh, like mm -hmm. mostly like on that style. But usually you jump um, and um, you like amaze the listener. No, with something 
you take in uncomfortable places mm. just to take them back to a comfortable place and see like probably was the the same thing you were saying before with the old and the new thing no so you probably play like a classic that everybody knows mm. and you like mix it up with something that is completely like breakthrough and it's like avant-garde and it's like what the fuck is going on here no cool so you know you, you keep that's the best if if someone said that <laughs> okay so win all right. perfect good <laughs> yeah no, that, that kind of stuff no that kind of stuff uh, you, to have like something that is organic and is um, uh inspiring for somebody else mm -hmm. who is listening mm -hmm. to is just not doing like going to a like a, a party to dance i mean to dance have a good time but also like learn something and be amazed no, by, by something yeah yeah, if, I mean, if it, you know, if I'm, if I got the stage, then I'm gonna try and put on a show. You know, I'm gonna try and involve people, and you know, and and uh, not alienate them. You know, and the, the funny thing is, is you know, when I grew up, you know, if if someone played something often, or you know, when I was a kid, I'd buy these UK 12 inches, you know, for like 12 bucks, and you know, not eat, you know, eat a burrito or whatever, but. I would buy those records and then I'd play them at one set and then I wouldn't play it again for like, you know, maybe ever because the concept where I was at, at when I was young was there's all these DJs playing all this music and no one's playing anything new. And um, the, the hip hop scene was very stagnant, you know, when, when, um, when I was getting booked a lot, you know, in the 90s and stuff. And I felt like there was a lot of stagnant DJs that were only playing hip hop. And so I was bringing UK, you know, instrumental beats, you know, local stuff too, domestic stuff too. But at that point, what I saw was that there's a certain thing that I can bring to the table. And, you know, at that point, what I saw that I could bring to the table was the majority of the stuff that I was playing was very new. You know, I was playing drum and bass, you know, at a very early stage when it was very experimental. And um, I was playing UK instrumental hip hop stuff. You know, when, up something. Yeah, when no one else was really, yeah. you know, there was like three DJs in the bay and none of them were mixing it. It was really crazy. And um, so I, I saw this space where it was like, OK, this is where I shine, you know, and I, I can play in these at all these raves and underground parties. And I'm not going to play dance music because that's all everyone is hearing. I'm going to play. You know, I'm going to play Wu-Tang, I'm going to play, you know, I'm going to play old Run DMC stuff, and I'm going to mix it with DJ Shadow and, you know, DJ Crush and all, you know, Funky Porcini and Jazz and play Prince. No one was playing Prince. No one was playing Prince. And we played at the raves and stuff. And, you know, the reason why I'm saying this is because at a time, you know, in hip hop, it was really aggressive and no one had the balls to play Prince. And so... <laughs> I played the crap out of Prince. We played Prince all the time, it, you know, once a set, which yeah. was a lot, you know, because we were trying to bring, you know, attention to instrumental music. So we'd finish this, you know, if everybody was having fun, you know, at the end of the set, I'd mix in something like that soulful that everyone knows. And that was kind of like the cherry on top. You know, we'd have a bang and dance floor dancing to like 60 BPM music. You know, and then we'd double time into Prince, you know, and, and people would lose their shit. And it was amazing. And that's how we treated people with an experience that you could get nowhere else. And then we'd treat them with something that was fantastic. And, you know, in like 2000 something, I saw the opposite of that, where people's entire sets were, um, what's it called, clips or whatever, you know, and, and um, uh, what's the name, Front Pharrell, you know, and it would just be this whole set of just jizzing on everyone the whole time mm. instead of like hey you know this is an experience that we're gonna go through together where you're gonna get something that no one else does and it was it's funny because during all of these times i saw an opportunity to be someone that shared something with people and so you know every time i play i try and do something that not everyone is doing so Unfortunately, I don't get to play Michael Jackson and Prince as much as I want to yeah, because no. there's so many people doing it. I don't want to play like what everybody else is playing, you know, so I'll play it on New Year's once or twice, you know. <laughs> just for... <laughs> you know just, what I mean? I mean, you know, you know when, um, I mean, uh, you have the, 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 
the control of, of it. No, when you DJ, so and you yeah, and that's this. that's oh, that's the other thing I want to say is is if 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 I can make these points while keeping the crowd engaged, if if I can't, you know, if you can't get the people to dance without playing top forty or top, you know, anything, if you're playing all '80s stuff that everyone knows, I mean, I play '80s sets where it's like. Literally nothing anyone knows because everyone's playing all the stuff that everyone knows. So it's like, why don't we spread the wealth? You know, like, yeah. And so what I what I try and you know, so I I very rarely say this, but I feel very comfortable here. <laughs> but I I think that if you're playing only music that everyone knows and loves, there's no reason for you to be there because it can just go home and do that without you. So. You know, I'm not saying play a hour of just static, you know, or or aggressive, crazy noise music, you know. But there's somewhere in between, you know. Yeah. And I don't even consider myself that experimental, because the where the the crew I grew up in was very experimental, and I was actually I would actually play to the crowd, you know. And whenever I do that, I felt kind of like a sellout, you know, because I would play like something with a little bit more obvious beat in it, you know, where I play a little up tempo, yeah. you know, but I, I saw that as an opportunity to share with people. People came to see me, you know, and things like that. But so what I'm saying is if you just rely on that thing that everybody knows already, I think you're selling yourself and everybody short, you know. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, no, no. I mean, I mean, mix it, mix it up, and also yeah. it's a it's a work of DJ to find tunes and yeah. like listen, discovery, and uh, you know, like take dust off some records uh, never been played and see. Oh, this is a good tune, you know, and put yeah. it together. And it's a luxury, you know. I don't I don't want to downplay because at the same time, like I I also see the value, you know. If I'm at a house party, I don't generally like grab the tone arm and scratch it across the turntable and make, you know, make everybody force them to listen. Yeah. You know, like if you're in a small town and no one ever sees DJs and all of a sudden you have an opportunity to play and then you alienate everyone in a sense you're shooting yourself in the foot. So I think there's a balance to yeah. it all. You know, I think there's a balance and and I have the luxury of being in one of the greatest DJ towns in the world. San Francisco is is you know we we gave birth to so much beautiful DJ culture that I feel at luxury and also I feel a responsibility to carry some element of that torch. I'm obviously not scratching every record and yeah. doing insane stuff, but I do feel it is my you know I I feel like I owe it to the culture to carry that torch of of you know intelligent forward thinking motion, you know. Yeah, you're right. Also, you know, it's a, it's a balance, even to like technical balance. You don't have yeah. to overdo shit, and you know, like see, oh, I'm good. Like, you, you see me, I got it. No, it's not like a, what do you say, like a bragging of. Yeah, yeah, like, um, yeah, yeah. But you know, like coming back on uh, uh, what you were saying, just to be different. No? Yeah. Like you've been uh, like musically, like since the very beginning. No, you started with an EP uh, called I Cry. Uh, yeah. So in the hip hop world, like everybody's like, well, like I'm fucking like the best, like bullying and shit, like I'm fucking the ma macho man, you know, like I cry. Yeah. No, it's completely like, you know, and since the very beginning, even like, yeah, that the reason I did that, it's funny because um, if you listen to the record, it's my first EP record thing, and um, there was uh, how do I put it? So I I made it all on the MPC 2000. And um, there's only a few digits, so I chose four. So I put okay. I cry four letters oh, yeah. because um, it, it's indirectly rele relevant to the sample. Excuse me, which is um, which is uh, Eleanor Rigby. Okay. So I sampled a cover of Eleanor Rigby. Uh, I think it was West Montgomery or something like that. Um, yeah, it's a nice cover. Yeah. Yeah, and oh. so it was. I put like you know, and I have. Qu um, I have uh, Herc, uh, Herc talking about to B Boy and stuff like that. It was very like uh, thought. I thought you know I got very emotional into it, and it, I had like uh, beatboxing and stuff like that. And then um, I submitted that music to a bunch of skate videos. Well, they actually asked me for it, and then it got placed. And then all of a sudden, I had to catch up, and I only had this little 
centipedearms at hotmail.com email and all these dudes from Japan and Germany, Belgium, France, you know, London, like it was it was crazy how many emails I got and I was like, I gotta fucking put this out. It's crazy. And so I fleshed out the whole EP with all samples of Eleanor Rigby, which right. is all about being alone. You know, which is about lonely people. Where do yeah. all the lonely people go? And I was working with a really good local freestyle MC who moved here <clears throat> from Detroit. And um, I asked him to make a rap about being alone, you know? <laughs> so it's all like lonely and emo and stuff like that. And it was a cool way to kind of integrate with the music, <clears throat> you know, conceptually. It was when like, it was before like conceptual rap was a big thing, you know? It was way before like, oh, and the crazy thing is I made all of this before the fucking Grey album, before Danger Mouse did all the Beatles. And it kind of reminds me of my whole career, which is like, the whole album was a concept piece with the Beatles, with samples of covers of Eleanor Rigby, but it wasn't explicit. Yeah. And the whole thing that I was gonna do was, when people, after people loved it and listened to it, then I would share with them what the samples were, you know, after it had sold and after it had gone out. But I wasn't, it wasn't like that same, I was, I didn't have that same pop mentality, I never have. But it's funny because I made this whole record with samples of Eleanor Rigby, and, um, then the day, the gray album comes out and it's like the biggest thing and mashups start blowing up and all of that so it's always i've always been this sort of you know have this kind of concept and then it kind of it the industry changes around that time you know yeah so. or probably like you're like a pioneer um, uh <laughs> what do you say like uh, unrecognized pioneer of, of something you know like avant-garde <laughs> avant avant this i mean the... while i want to while i want to receive that love <laughs> i think i think any artist as you see you know yourself dipping into this creative passionate place where you're creating and exploring and trying to really create something new i always see this there's always this sort of polar opposite thing like there's this dude there's a few people in the world that are doing this skip on beat thing And I know they got it from totally, we all got it from different places. And it reminds me of when I used to go record shopping, I'd dig through every single crate. And this thing would always happen where I'd buy two records, totally have nothing to do with each other. And they would, sometimes they'd have the same exact sample in them. And it was crazy how many times that happened, or the same exact rhythm, or the same exact beat. And um, that's how I organize my records it's a lot of kind of how i got it or how i got introduced to it because of that aspect of it because these dudes on other sides of the planet that have no connection to each other are just doing the identical same thing somehow and i think that's shows that it isn't just us it's this sort of conduit to the other world whatever the other world is of creativity or our, that's what i think our brains are really yeah for, the common you know? ground of creativity the ideas yeah. it's like a plato, plato concept the ideas are saying like above us and we are just remembering stuff that it's already there yeah i mean like um, it's like a something that the dj does you know like listen, yeah. listening to Absolutely. a track and always like thinking what's what can can be paired to that no? yeah how so, is that going to affect them what's going to happen is that is it's an experiment you yeah. know at at the best it's an experiment a hypothesis and at the end it either didn't work or it did and yeah. if if it always works you could be that dude where it always works but i think if it always works i don't think you're really pushing that hard because if it always works then you could push even that much harder yeah <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> so I know. Let's uh, let's change um, topic real quick and let's talk about. No, it. I mean change a bit actually. The, your your record label. Your, yeah. Let's talk about this. I mean, California Color CP is uh, under. It's like a, the the third release uh, on something record, like that. Yeah, I think twelfth maybe something around there. You know, some okay. of those we did with other people too. Okay. So there's some gray area in there. Okay. Where, We work with other people and stuff. Um, But you know, this is a change a bit. It's like uh, uh, your vision, your music vision, like come true. No, like it's yeah, uh, mostly... yeah. It's it's I, it's a trajectory really of um, of experimental rap music. I think is the is the quickest buzzword to describe it. It's it's really comes from obviously the um, the song changed the beat, 
by Fab Five Freddy, which is I I think is very uh, God. I could talk about that thing for an hour or so, but it's it's very um, it relates to a, an ideal that I think got lost somewhere in music and music culture and culture in general, which is this cross section of like you know when Blondie and the Clash were recording for MCs in in New York and and MCs were making art and it was all coming together in this cross section of like of dance and and cultural explosion DJ MCs and just this explosion of of culture and that's when that's what I feel like Fab Five Freddy and the change the beat song you know there's a French rap on the back side of it with weird ass noises and stuff yeah, oh, yeah listen to this yeah. there you go and he starts by saying the hip hop world is a fantasy. Yeah. You know? yeah, and also, you know, we change the beat that you also do some. Um... Oh, you got the 12 inch version. Yeah. yeah, and also, change the beat is um, uh, an occasion for you to, like, I mean, besides, like, it's a creative out outlet, you release your music, but also. You do some events where you can uh, actually create community, and you create you have a, like a community out there, and it's uh, it's nice. It's a nice thing I've seen. Uh, you uh, that you had a record release party in September, no? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, at the Great no Great, Great Norton, something like that. No? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, sorry, uh, I'm looking for the seven inch because yeah. I think uh, I know I got the cover here, and it's just it's this fantastic little moment where okay. you can see. You can see how uh, how cool the whole cross section is, um, but yeah, well, okay, so yeah, so we did a release party um, for the actual for the California Colors EP. Oh, I'm the one who's moving it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and it, it, I tried to represent that kind of energy there. You know, we had um, we had e yes. call, callers take one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, You're saying get that dude to tuck his shirt, untuck his shirt, untuck, his shirt. untuck it, Drewman. What? <laughs> oh, right, yeah, that's good. yeah. So get talk, that talk, goop talk, off his shirt. Talk, Is that someone calling? I should. We should answer it, and they might no, tell man, me it's, to it, fix it, my. It, it's okay. You know, right. So let's go back on. Uh, tell that where, goofy where? DJ to shut up. Is that what they're saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. My uh, haters. Sorry. Here you go. There you go. There you go. And this is the important part. So that's the important part, I think, on the backside because it's got uh, it's got art by Futura. So it's Futura 2000. So Fab Five Freddy created you know created a run on celluloid. Oh no, he did. He's part of it, but this is the one that I love. But. Hmm. There's a there's a group of them phase two, you know, where it's basically MCs all got together basically this collection is I think there's six in the collection and they all have the back done by Futura two thousand who went on to do all the art a lot of the art of Mo Wax. And so during my formative years as as being a DJ, I was buying all type of stuff like Ninja Tune and Mo Wax, especially with DJ Shadow. And the majority of the art was done by Futura 2000. So that's just one aspect of okay. the change of the beat. Yeah, also, let's, uh, you mentioned DJ Shadow. Uh, that for you, was a big uh, uh, inspiration and uh, collaboration also, no? You yeah, are, I mean... You are on I, his label. Uh? Yeah, when I first bought his, their, first, uh, their first release, you know, the Soul Sides release, it it was a day that changed my life. I, w I went to, um, you know, I could talk about that forever, but no, we have time is uh, time is uh, okay. Yeah, give it two minutes. <laughs> November <laughs> November twenty sixth, nineteen ninety three, the day that Mofono's life was changed. Okay. I went to the opening of the bomb hip hop shop, and um, we sat with our black books in the corner and just chilled the whole day with all our graffiti homies from Santa Rosa and Sonoma 707 you know and um we went to basically the opening of the bomb hip hop shop and we chilled with our black books and bought this I bought this tape of called the Soul Sides 
and it was DJ Shadow's first release with Asia Born and Black Alicious. And then we went to see the uh, Souls of Mischief open up for the Alcoholics for and then De La Soul and Tribe Called Quest at the Warfield. And uh, there was a huge brawl, and it was mind-blowing because I saw these hippies that I looked up to as, like, you know, these peace-loving kind of eccentric dudes and there was uh, 40 dudes ran up on stage and there was a brawl and it was fucking insane because i watched fucking q-tip like pounding some dude in the head on the stage and like one of the souls of mischief dudes broke a mic stand on this dude's foot who was like dancing on top of the speaker and that show was you know we all did acid and shit and like hung out with shaw one who went down with us old graffiti dude from 707 and when we get home you know, we look at, we're looking through our black book and we realize that the dude that was chilling with us the whole time at the bomb hip hop shop signing our black books and stuff was Saphir the Hobo Junction. So it was literally like it was one of those experiences where we I understood about culture that you have to go find it, that you have to leave the house and you have to go get it. And that's one of the things that I learned growing up in the seven oh seven is we weren't immersed so we had to come and get it and to me that was a great experience of going and fucking getting it mm. you know buying fat caps from the fucking from uh from Doug one and shit from the little window and it was it was just a legendary day full of graffiti rap and acid and fighting and, and change your life <laughs> yeah yeah life changing but so that's when i'm that's when i got introduced to dj shadow and uh i listened to that tape and then was buying Mo Mo Wax records, and then here's this other DJ Shadow from the UK, and so to find out that it was the same dude was also mind blowing, you know. So. And uh, at the end of the day, you end up to in to be an artist on his record label, and uh, it was in July you opened for his tour. Yeah, we Nash did. I've done two tours with two. him. Okay. Um, yeah, it's been great, you know. Um, it's cool you brought him up because we recorded this uh this uh Ernie Fresh EP. We recorded it and I gave him all the music and um when he heard it he said, "Hey, I'm working on a new album and I would love your fucking help on it." And uh so yeah, I shit basically I shit my pants and then I went and helped him on the record. <laughs> so I <laughs> So it was it was basically what he said is um this EP is phenomenal and I want to record you I want you to help me record Ernie for my next album because of how dope this EP sounds. So he said I want you to make him sound like this right, on yeah. my record. It was good. So, um, I saw the the, the side show song. Yeah, that's is, the song. Yeah, that's the song. Yeah. You got you got the record yet, no? I bet so. Somewhere. Somewhere, yes. It's a great it's a great it's a great twelve inch, the sideshow. You know, it's got this cool little oh, inlay nice, yeah. slide out. And he did it right, you know what I mean? He did it with the song, the instrumental and the acapella. And the acapella. So okay. it's a great I mean it's a great release, you know. You wanna show it to the Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you can look at it if you want. But yeah, it's a great great release. It's a twelve inch off his album. The mountain will fall. Um, yeah, it's a it's a good record. You know? Yeah, a lot of crazy visuals. You know, I got to know Ben Stokes, big up Ben Stokes, um, and um, just working with them all has been phenomenal. You know, working with all these dudes, I keep finding this thing, which is that there's there's all these legends, and to when you get in the studio with dudes like that, you know with the it's so amazing to to find them to be these humble dudes these these characters that have amazing values in in you know and to to see it you know to hang out with them and and get to know them and you know it's just it's i feel very lucky and um you know i try and do the same i try and share them with other people and other people with them yeah. so it's not just you know so the so the so it doesn't just end there you know because I feel like that's part of my role as being like the young underdog with these cats is to, you know, to 
be a part of their lives and be a part of this sort of sharing experience that, you know, they're sharing with me, I'm sharing with them, and, you know, we're all sharing together. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, like, uh, you are le- definitely you are learning from them, but I'm at the so same sorry. at the same time, no, 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 I mean, uh, you are also teaching them somehow, no? You are bringing some elements to the table anyways, so... I mean, yeah, I don't think, I don't think, to put it this way, like, I have to remind myself, you know, um, I don't think they would mess with me if I wasn't bringing something to the table. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm going to the UK soon, and I'm going to meet with some more legends and, and work with music, work with them on music, and I keep, you know, it's like people say that, I pinch myself or whatever, I I, I remind myself that it's happening so that I fully embrace the situation and try and bring something to the table every time. Um, but at the same time, I'm humbled and, you know, I, I think that's why I think it's so important to work with guys like that that I respect so much. And they're these characters that are not, they're not pieces of shit, you know. There's so many pieces of shit in the industry and cocky motherfuckers that don't give a fuck about you. Yeah. and. I don't give a, yeah, I don't give a fuck about them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. whether you're young or old, like there you you ain't shit because you you got a few opportunities and if you can make music and you can make make money at it, especially shit, you are lucky. You know, so to be a cocky fuck, I think you need to step down. So what I I work with dudes that are ill and are dope fucking dudes. And um, and I'm really proud of it. Yeah, and also, I, I feel lucky. Human. You know? ah! human. Uh, humanity is <laughs> not like, you know. All right. Oh, it's 348. So yeah. it's, the time is about to run. So what's in the, in your future? We have this collab yeah. in the UK. There is, let's leave it. We feel like, I think it was last week or two weeks ago. We, we had Tom Tom here. Yeah, So you had man. this release, uh, the Funkadelic uh, rework by Detroiters. Yeah, lucky to work with Tom, one of the oldest DJs in the Bay. Like, that dude knows me. He knows where I come from. And, and that's what I love is working with these people that know and understand a certain trajectory of the culture. And this Tom is a perfect example, DJ Tom Thump. Um, I, I love that dude. He's, I mean... There's dudes like that, Chris Orr, you know, these people that have basically, that I've seen since the beginning, you know, Cool Chris, Neil, Kiss My Ass, you know, these people that I've seen since the beginning of, for me, my beginnings, you know, and I value that so much because they're dudes that understand, you know, what what has gone on and, and you know, some of the important roles that the Bay Area has played and musical culture and dj culture and and record and vinyl culture and stuff so shut up uh, to the <laughs> Sorry, up. Yeah. yeah no i mean like i know i know the, the, <laughs> and i agree exactly for what you say so um, future projects coming up what's, man, what's, going, what's it, going on what's coming up soon? yeah man there's so something much you can say or something man you... i can, what i can tell you is is I'm working with a with a whole slew of horns horn players, the Halftone Society, and um, you know we did a Halftone Society rhythm section with Young Andy, um, but yeah, I'm I'm working on finishing the album. You know, we got dudes like uh, Joe Cohen, P Dub, Joe Cohen, Adam Thies, Marcus Steffens, Izzy Wise. You know Izzy? Yeah, yeah Izzy's on the record. So okay. yeah, we got. I mean, we got a whole slew of dudes. Young Andy helped on keys and bass and stuff like that. Um, it's it's really you know it's a really amazing piece that I only set out to make because I knew these dudes that could lay it the fuck down, and these dudes are so ill. Some of the best, you know. Evan Francis lives in New York now, um, but some of the best players and. I lucked out because they trusted me and they they lent their skill and came to the studio and we recorded these crazy eccentric pieces. So that's coming your way. Some of you have heard it. I played it on yeah. on Boiler Room. I pl- I think I played a few here last time. You know, it's it's literally been yeah. in the works for the 5 wor- years. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So stay tuned. Uh, change yeah, the beat. Change, change the, the beat. beat. Yeah, change the beat. CB that and we got com. Twin Mang Frame. He helped on some of the EP on the on the Mo3 EP. 
So I got I got all all type of stuff up my sleeve, and it's all coming coming your way. Like you know, stay tuned. I uh, I got some comment uh, like killing it as usual. You are the best. Ah, <laughs> all right. Who said that? Uh, ben Ezra. Ah, oh, uh, love uh, you, Ben. Hell yeah. yeah. Sorry. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's three fifty-two. Let's uh, yeah. let's try to. You wanna play like a last song? Let's play something for. Let me play something that uh, inspired the the EP. Is that cool? Yeah, and we we have and then to, we fade we, out. Yeah, we fade out in three minutes. The okay? lovely Miss Desiree has to Thank go. Thank you for being here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, one, one love, big up, change the beat, whole crew, everybody, Dirt Wave, all my San Diego homies, E Gads. I got that fucking test pressing, motherfucker. That shit is the shit. Cool. Watch out if you if you don't know what's up, you better look up EGADS, look up the fucking the whole crew SD, yeah, Drumetrics, you know what the deal is. Tension, yeah. All right, Mofono in the house, Mofono DJ Centipede. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Let's have a closing yeah. closing one. Let's yeah, we, yeah, we got yeah we got a second. We got and a we'll sec get out of here. Yes, man. Thank Antonio, you. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, All right, man. Espresso Session ninety four. BFF BFF.fm There we go Best frequencies forever In the mission We're in the mission SF What yeah, up Yeah We are in Hell the yeah. mission district We're gonna play This uh, Sunday At Bay Area Record Fair A lot of uh, BFF DJs Is gonna play Some records you for you it's Big Oh yeah Big up Chinese man I'm coming to see you guys In fucking oh, yeah. London We got three dates We got three dates I'm playing in Manchester I'm gonna chill with Mr. Scruff What the fuck yeah. Yeah, going to the UK, then I'm going to Paris, I'm going to Marseille. Man, I remember like last time you came here, it was like two, like, a, like a year ago. Yeah. I was playing randomly some Chinese men. Remember? Dope. Remember? If yeah. I, oh, yeah, I know this guy. Yeah. So. yeah. Cool. All right. <laughs> French dudes, the DJ crew. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Benji Mofono, aka Benji. DJ Centipede. Yeah. Right on, Hell yeah. And uh, California Colors EP. California Colors EP cbrecords.com support uh, independent music oh, we'll play, we'll play. we play we'll play one off the EP let, let yeah, me play yeah. that uh, let me play that it's like a minute long yeah it's very drop good drop that thing out of there yeah <laughs> Fono in the house best frequencies forever espresso sesh oh, I think I'm getting no signal <laughs> We are the ultimate team Striving to stay alive and reaching the dream If you, it, The funny thing about this is if you Shazam that beginning sample You find the original sample But I'm like that, it's illegal as fuck so one love to the illegal samples. Oh yeah. Me and my mates wanna say to say, fat cap, gold cats with executive crates. We get the root out in a hurry, 